Yes, we are here. And as Joanne was trying to fumble over her words to say, uh, we are many collectives that are of assistance to the sessions. So you can call them us by many names, but we are really of assistance to help humanity. And while we know that humans love uh, dissecting and labeling everything they possibly can, uh, really what you need to focus on is that we are here to be able to help with this planet and humanity and all of the beings that are here on this planet at this time. So uh, thank you for calling us in because we are of service. We actually did help assist you with your questions that you have for us today because we agree they are important for uh, re-exploring and uh, re-exploring re and re-explaining uh, and reintroducing the same concepts that we've already spoken to in many different sessions, but we would like this opportunity to be able to share it again with you now in this format. Thank you so much. Um, I will preface this by saying I'm new here, so be patient with me. But um, as a very left brain oriented starseed, I do find a lot of this esoteric um, philosophy, theology, whatever you want to say, theories, intimidating and hard to follow. I'm doing my best to follow my intuition, but as a left brain person, I'm still trying to put the pieces together. With that being said, uh, I have identified two major theories about what New Earth actually means, and I wanted to ask your perspective on it. The first one is that um, the first theory is new earth is this earth, but after the ascension of Gaia and then everyone on it, that would be considered new earth. The second theory is that new earth is a separate planet because Gaia needed a fresh start and the darkness was just too deep and too hard to get rid of. And it was just better for everyone involved, especially her to start over. So I wanted to know uh, which one is actually true. Uh, for the sake of understanding where we are coming from, we will say both are true for the point that you said. The first one is that, uh, that, um, that the new planet, sorry, that the new earth is Gaia. So it is Gaia is shifting vessels she is leaving this current body and she is reincarnating into a new vessel a new planet and so the new earth is Gaia the, but she is going to be referred as a different name so it is not the same here your lives are not going to be the same your bodies will not be the same your lives will not be the same you will not be on this physical planet any longer the ground and soil that you can hold will not be on the new earth. The new earth is a completely different body, a completely different vessel, a completely different location, a completely different everything. But Gaia will be shifting her consciousness and evolving along into the fifth dimension where she will snugly and perfectly be able to be rejuvenated as she has evolved herself. And those who want to raise their frequency and vibration and follow her are welcome. I'm under the impression that that was not the original plan. Um, is that true? That is correct. The original plan was for humanity to be able to raise its consciousness uh, and be able to evolve naturally and on this vehicle that you are sitting on right now, be able to shift into the fifth dimension and so be able to help her with the evolution. However, her tolerance, her resources, um, her, shall we say, very crassly, her will to live in these situations, she has uh, no longer been able to keep up. It has drained her. You are like, to say this with much love, you are the parasite that has drained her will to live here right now. And this may feel very uh, challenging for people because you'll feel like you're responsible, but it's not just you individuals as the collective use, it's the collective of humanity and what has gone 
awry, what has gone definitely out of uh, alignment and path and how what is happening right now should never, ever, 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 ever got to this point. So yes, you are correct. This earth, this vessel should have been able to evolve naturally into fifth dimension by herself. And you could have also expanded along with her. It would have been fantastic to be able to have done that, to jump in naturally here. However, things have not gone as planned, and we are very, very, very well aware of this, and this is why we're having to take the measures, and it's very, it's a lot of measures. It's not the only time, or the very the first time ever that we have had to evacuate a planet, because they, the planet is uh, at an end of cycle. So um, we are having to evacuate this planet, uh, as we have done many, many, many times before. Um, so this is... You know, this is important, but we want you to be able to understand that to help yourselves to be able to transition and evolve with Gaia, you must be raising your vibration and frequency. Okay. Um, with that being said, well, one, I just feel that is correct. Uh, but two, what is the point of disclosure of all the um, Luciferian agenda? throughout time on Gaia, what is the point of disclosure on that if we're all leave anyway? Mm -hmm. So this disclosure has been for decades. Uh, many people have known about it, but many are just slowly waking up to it. So it doesn't surprise you that when you notice that you were waking up to your spirituality, to this journey, you were also awoken to this truth. It's not waiting for it to be suddenly disclosed next week or next month as you will. You've already known about it. The disclosure happened as you were awakening to the truth. And so people needed to be awoken to the truth to be able to have that disclosure. Everyone's thinking it's still to come, it's still to come. And eventually it will to some degree, but you already know about it. You've already woken up. That information, these disclosures are for the sleepy ones, shall we say. Absolutely. Um... I feel inundated with psyops and I feel like that has just begun. I, I will ask the same question again in a different way with the psyop. What's the point of these entities, whoever it is, these governments, people, families, whatever, what's the point of the psyops if we are on the cusp of ascension? <laughs> Uh, as you know, not that many people know about the shift to new earth. That is a physical new shift, a physical new body. They're assuming it's all here. And so therefore they are still thinking that they have got control. Uh, they are starting to wisen up and realize that there is going to be a greater shift. So there is a scurry. Um, the psyops are to distract um, because they're trying to buy time. They're tr trying to buy time to not, to still keep control and to not be able to empower others. Um, they're assuming that they have more time than they do. Um, I'm glad you said that because I'm wondering what the schedule is of the events. By schedule, I don't mean timeline. I mean in series of events with this new timeline. Um, I'm, I'm assuming it's going to start with disclosure, but correct me if I'm wrong. Where does it go from there? Hmm. It is uh, still uh, piece by piece by piece awakening people slowly to the information. We're also waiting on a huge amount of light workers to be able to really spear. Uh, it's almost like they're collecting them as if it's a fashion. Um, whatever is holding on to your fear and worry and concern, um, this is time for you to release it and focus on it. Be serious with yourself and honest with yourself. You can't really truly say that you're an enlightened being, but you still have a lot of fear. You shouldn't even be afraid of the dark at the moment. You shouldn't be afraid of anything. You should be able to be fearless. Fearless is something that is part of your empowerment of self. Trusting you're protected, trusting everything is going according to plan. Uh, this is our advice to you. Uh, that was not the question you asked from us, though we distracted ourselves. What is the schedule of events on this new timeline? <laughs> right. Okay. So uh, for everyone to lose their fear and to empower themselves, it will go faster. Uh, so we highly encourage all to do that. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Uh, so we're waiting for a lot of people to still uh, 
it's like marinating themselves in this denser energy uh, it's not the right word we're saying uh, people are marinating themselves in this denser energy which is actually a opportunity for them to raise themselves their frequency higher there is resistance there uh, the more that we raise the planet's frequency it's continually rising and rising and rising and rising those people who are watching the human resonance uh, will be seeing something that is not fully what is happening so and we are with love cranking up the energy and the vibrations of this planet to be able to help you and so it is pressurizing people to really focus at their inner work they are feeling dense and so they sort of want to give up a little bit they're feeling tired there is a whole lot of reasons why we are still waiting uh, so those are the light workers who are feeling very dense at the moment they've still got some inner stuff to do and to release you're really wanting to know about when 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 can i schedule it in when can i say see you later suckers i'm out of here i've done all my inner work and i am going now on a long vacay to new earth and we say you deserve that you deserve that we are still waiting for some things to unfold. If you can imagine, it is a lot of moving parts that all need to fall into place. So ultimately, we're still waiting on a lot of people who have lost hope uh, to be able to gain hope back and to be able to really empower themselves and that will raise their frequency. Those people who are waiting and hoping for big disclosures, waiting for a certain presence to come back into power and all this sort of stuff, big disclosures, big truths to come out, they have gone away, had a little pity party, feel really frustrated, they're in the garden, they're eating the worms and they are sort of even over feeling that frustrated themselves. So they are slowly building themselves up. And they're realizing that they hate the taste of fear. They're really realizing that they are more in power and control when they have hope and excitement. And so they're starting to find themselves looking forward to, to positive. So those are the people who are excited about the financial resets, uh, the people that are uh, holding on to the excitement of the disclosures about uh, the health issues. Um, there are so many things that are just on the bridge you can sense them you can feel them they're so close and all these people are needing to see something happen for them to be able to um to really buy into allowing themselves to feel joy and happy and hope but uh, while this has been delayed uh, we're waiting for them to naturally hype themselves up again we said we can shift you immediately as soon as all of humanity um, is doing what they need to do, which is raise their vibration. Uh, so of course we know, because some people are feeling like, well, this is not fair. I'm a light worker and I'm supposed to hold heaps of space and my cousin is all asleep and they must be very low vibe. And we say that's judgment. You do not know what a sleeping person, in quotation marks, a sweet sleeping person is doing energetically wise. We know that there are many people who assume and judge their sleeping counterparts as being dense as rocks. And the reality is they could be just so focused on being able to do their bigger light energy work. They don't want to buy into anything else. They just want to go status quo and just live easy. And what may seem to be a judgment on others stupidly through life. Um, because that is, they're doing the energy work. They didn't want to buy into trying to awaken humanity. They just want to take one foot step over another. So it's very hard. You must not judge a light worker from their awake and seemingly awoke stances. Just like you must not judge someone who spouts spirituality, says that they're all sorts of bits and pieces but yet don't actually follow through with the information you can have a very blocked and limited light worker who is spreading their their gospel um versus someone who's very asleep and uh, wants to protect themselves from the health scares and they have voted for the most uh uh, the person that they uh, felt the more pressured uh, by peer pressure to vote for, you can see that there is a disconnect from the, the, the actions 
of these light workers and these people. You cannot tell, just like how we want to add now, you cannot tell a star seed from a blood type. You cannot tell a star seed from how they look. You cannot tell. This is, this is part of the illusion of uh, coming in and not knowing anything and being able to just live your lives in 3D. There is, um, oh, we feel like we want to go on a rant right now about this, but it is, um, it is you having to just have discernment between what is truth and what is entertainment, what is truth and what is uh, ego-based uh, nonsense and then uh, find your discernment from it and uh, the people that uh, spout off that they are um, leading you to the truth can often be leading you to their own ego and agenda again we know you've asked about when and so we're sort of saying it is helping it's all of these working pieces the people have to keep in a higher frequency and vibration and those sleeping family members can actually be helping the cause as much as you cannot see it because most of you have no sense of vibration and frequency of others and most of you judge most of you are very easy to to judge others and compare yourselves and that is human that we are not judging you for judging others so uh just trust that your focus should be on you and being able to go and to grow and so when you all have that perspective and when you all uh, take responsibility of keeping yourself in high frequency love for yourself, high frequency love of others, accepting others and honoring uh, that everyone here has a greater soul in these tiny, silly little human bodies that we find adorable. So we know that we're not going to give you dates in this public session and we know that we're not going to say it's tomorrow or it's next year but we're saying you know that things are starting to feel very very interestingly close and so focus on your daily responsibilities do not just think it's going to happen anyway i'll just naturally shift Focus on your vibration, focus on your frequency, focus on spreading love to yourself. And we say this and say this and say this, and we need this. This is so important. Stop distracting yourselves from judging or comparing yourselves and your growth. Just honor yourselves and stop taking this life so seriously. Yes, you could feel so overwhelmed focusing on the psyops. The psyops, they're there to distract. Don't be, don't be distracted from them. That's the whole point of not focusing on them. Don't buy into the control and don't buy into the fear factors of it. It's easy from our perspective when we say this with much love. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually going to be the first thing I said. <laughs> from the outside, I, I would say the exact same thing. But from my perspective on the inside, um, I don't know how to use my discernment. I'm, I'm doing the best that I can, but I am certainly not above being tricked and I have been, and it's a constant tar a moving target, honestly, to find that what the truth is and what resonates with me. We don't know how to use our discernment. And I would say that would be all of humanity, not just myself. And I am very analytical. Um, not only that, I'm unable to stop taking this seriously because it is so serious and we have to be on defense mm. the entire time because we're being, um, well, our entire life has been a multi-level, multi-approach PSYOP and that is definitely the case right now. So we want to keep the high vibration, mm -hmm. but we don't know what the truth is or, or who, how, how to trust ourselves really. Yeah, so that is the very answer you're looking for. How do you trust yourselves? And we're saying you can use your discernment. You can use your intuition. You can, you can, you can. Look at, when you listen back to this session, listen to yourself saying, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. And we're saying you can. You do not, though, we want to ask you this. 
How many times do you need to be able to see that you have been manipulated and controlled in the history of humanity? How many times do you need to wake up to that? Well, I would say that's probably the majority. I'd rather know where am I right so I know what feeling to lean into. So do you need to be awoken to all of the truth to understand the situation? Or do you just need to accept that this is the situation and be able to then stop distracting yourself with all of the distractions and be able to go and do your inner work? I think I need to know what is it, what is the feeling of a distraction and what is the feeling of truth? Mm -hmm. that's, that's where I and I think a lot of us are at. We don't know which is which. Mm -hmm. So the more that you focus on yourself, the more that you empower yourself, the more you can trust yourself, the more you can love yourself. This is through words. This is through actions. Uh, the more you will be able to resonate with uh, being distracted versus actually seeing things from a bigger perspective. Because right now you're still wanting to see facts and figures and proof of all sorts of bits and pieces, which you already truly do know and you already are awakening to it. So it's like uh, you only need to be awakened once to then move on and accept things and get into that bigger perspective of, oh, so this is still awakening humanity. Got it. Now I'm awake. What does that mean? What am I supposed to do? Instead of you almost like... <laughs> Uh, trying to find all the injustices, all of the um, control systems and, and all the corruption. It's like you need to see all of it to then get to that next step of focusing on your mindset and understanding why it all needed to happen. You were awoken the first time you realized that there was control systems. Uh, stop focusing on it is what we would be saying because you're consuming yourself with the drama of it and it's not your drama anymore because it actually really isn't affecting you um but really when you stop focusing on it in terms of you are bringing it into your life you're feeling overwhelmed with it because you're like i must know all of the lies and the deceit and the deceptions i must know it all and the reality is you could do that for the rest of your time here and we are saying that will lower your frequency, that will make you into fear, that will make you scared, that will make you feel vulnerable and all that stuff. So when you are instead not focusing on all of this and focusing on yourself and empowering yourself, you'll actually realize that it's a waste of energy to focus on all of the things that need to awaken all the different people. You are already awoken. You can accept that. And now what do you do with it? We recommend inner work. We recommend loving yourself and all the other things we have said. We are also very aware of all of the truths. And we say you would actually get really bored and you actually, there is no real bonus or benefit for you to know all of the things. And besides, you will never be able to know all of the things while you're in your 3D life. So being the perfectionist that you are, can you accept you're not going to know all, but you can now focus on what you do need to be doing and what is your responsibility, which is your inner work and being able to be of service to yourself and the people that are in your lives. Guilty. <laughs> yes, I, I understand what you're saying. And you're right. At this point, it's Again, I, I just, I don't know if I could handle another psychological, well, I could, but a psychological loss of being like, dang, I was tricked again. I just want to put my energy on the most um, effective use of it. Yeah. And um, so I do consciously think about where I put my energy. But uh, again, I, I just don't want to be a sucker again. So I think that is the 3D human for you right there. But uh, I understand. What you are experiencing is the frustration of not seeing it earlier and you're afraid that you're going to miss something big again. When we have said all systems are corrupt and it's in every industry in all facets. So, um, you know, accept that <laughs> and be able to know that uh, the only option you really got to go for, which is gonna be of value to you to raise your vibration is doing the inner work and empowering and loving yourself. We love that you are now aware of where your energy and efforts have gone. And we also want to say that you are more um, stronger for being able to know 
that uh, you have been tricked and that you're starting to work on how do you, so, okay, now what? Now I, uh, I could spend the rest of my life researching or I could actually spend the rest of my life empowering myself and actually doing uh, the light work of work that, and responsibilities and duties that I actually was supposed to be here for. Um, and so we want to say many beings, even though they are just as a big of advanced beings as yourself, they do not want to feel the frustration of knowing that they were tricked. That is very hard to get over. A lot of people judge themselves for not being aware and sensing it. And so they have said, no, I'm not going to be aware of it until the time of the shift. And so, you know, it's very hard. We want to say, give compassion to those bigger beings who have refused to know any of this until the shift. Because at this point, you, you know, they need to literally be living in a cave. Uh, to not see it. So those people who need to experience the old earth situation, you know, it's very challenging for them. They are literally blind and deaf and, and, and not uh, being able to see anything while they are forced to be asleep for the shift approach. Absolutely. And it's just my off the cuff theory that a lot of the light workers all over the world were dispersed evenly uh, where we are needed. Um, a lot of us who are awake and are conscious um, feel responsibility for other people that are asleep and speaking to them hasn't worked. They want to be deaf, dumb, and blind and that's their choice. So I'm trying to respect that, but at the same time, I love them and I want the best for them. What can we do? for people like that what you can do is understand the lessons that are giving you to be that are being provided for you to, in the opportunities so if if shall we say uh if someone that you loved was sleeping and you were trying to wake them up and it's not their life contract to wake up so your efforts and energy are pointless but you are feeling um to overcome rejection you are feeling uh the need to accept uh, you are feeling the need to have compassion, even though they are not willing to, to make compromises. You are learning to accept a lot of feelings and emotions. So it's a gift, it's an opportunity. And um, when you are seeing it from our perspective, you're both going to be like hysterically laughing at each other. Like, oh my gosh, that was so funny. That game that we played where you were the sleepy uh, so-and-so and I was this big awoke person trying to shake the, the crap out of you. And, um, and while that is what you see is someone asleep, someone awake, what we would like you now to see is the experiences of learning how to respect someone who has differences and having compassion for someone who is, uh, who is different. Um, it is about uh, profound respect, love and consideration and uh, not comparing each other, not thinking that you're better than another person. There's so many beautiful lessons of mastering the 3D emotions, those fun little bag of tricks of those rainbow emotions that uh, you all want to overcome. You forget that all of these little challenges are part of the experiences and lessons and journey on this beautiful life. It feels a lot more dramatic <laughs> from my perspective. Um, and I think from a lot of other stars see that in light worse perspective, where it, it does feel like life and death. And although that is, um, I guess, the 3D concept, we want to do everything we can. And um, it feels like a failure. And I know it maybe shouldn't, but it does. Um, I, just, I don't know. I still trying to process that emotion. Um, it would help to know like what would happen, what will happen to them if this is their soul's contract to not wake up and to relearn 3D lessons, what, what happens to them after the shift? Well, they either get to stay on the old earth or they get to go and have another experience on a different 3D planet. Um, the reality is, and the reality is it's your ego wanting to save people. And so you think it's your job and duty. So you're distracting yourselves from your own inner work. Uh, so um, we want to say trust, 
if people were supposed to wake up, they would have now. It's their responsibility, their duties. You can you can show them what um, someone who has got love and respect for themselves looks like. Um, and uh, you are feeling rejected by someone who is not awakening to your advances. So we understand exactly why you're feeling very frustrated and rejected and hurt because you know the truth. It is the truth that you're trying to share with others, but it is about you empowering yourself more to be able to know that you don't have to be a, around anyone that believes and feels the same way as you. It's still the truth. It's still your truth. And so you're having to be okay with it. It's like you need a friend to be able to share this journey with, to be able to, to confirm that you know the truth and that it's all, you know, you're wanting reinforcement, you're wanting validation, you're wanting the gold star chart now. And the reality is you will find it within yourself, but you are still a little bit unsure of what you know, you still have a little bit of doubt. And so you're wanting that person to be able to be there for you and to have this as teamwork you're feeling like he is not part of your life and your journey and that feels alone and you feel very sad and you feel like, why can't he trust me? Why can't he believe this with me? And you so want to have this beautiful journey together, but he is right beside you with this helping you with these other range of emotions in the 3D, like fully empowering yourself. If you were two awake little cuties hanging out, living this 3D life, knowing the bigger picture, you may get stagnant and there may not be growth. You want to grow. You want to grow. You want to be able to have complete acceptance and love and compassion and consideration for even the most sleepiest little grumpy cactus you know. Well, spot on again. <laughs> yeah. I've got nothing else to say, but yeah. Um, I want to switch over to the galactic um, part of the questions I have. I, I feel like we, as in higher vibrational service to others, um, entities and humanity are at war with lower vibrational or demonic beings. And my question is, why, if we're just going to leave, because wouldn't it be easier to just um, leave the planet and then have old Gaia implode after everyone leaves? Because that seems like a good idea to me. So I was just wondering why we don't do that. Well, you are leaving the planet. And so you're wanting to know why you're at war? I, I want to know why those who are fighting are at war if we're about to leave anyway. Well, they're not really at war. They're wanting to control. And so we would not see it or say it as war. It is, it is trying to uh, make everyone right. Just like we could say you're at war with people who are asleep. Um, you're wanting your agenda to be the predominant one. And they're also wanting the same thing. So at war is not something that we would see. We are, well, we could say uh, something to make you understand this more. We are at war with lower dimensional vibrations. And so we are wanting you to empower yourself and win this war and be higher vibrational, which is seeing things in the positive, seeing things that are protected, seeing things that is going all according to plan. So don't focus on the density, focus on uh, manifesting your experience, what you want to do on the new earth and what your life would look like and feel like when you are marinated in unconditional profound love. Um, that is something we would like you to focus on more than thinking about a war. Yeah, I see what you mean. Um, it's all about perspective. And so when you have the bigger perspective of balance and neutrality, of what is happening to awaken humanity, then you can see things from such an easier, lighter perspective. Yeah, because right now I'm thinking of our soldiers. By, by our soldiers, I mean the Earth's soldiers who are fighting for humanity, not just my country. And I'm 
wanting to protect them, but I think that's the thing. thing. That's the thing. That's the thing. That's the thing. This is these light workers that think they need to save others because they know the truth about, you know, things are getting them and they're trying to warn each other about really, really, really bad things that are low vibrational. And so does that sharing news? It's like uh, sharing vibra sharing news about being in fear of fear-based narratives does not raise anyone's vibration. It's just gossip. Um, and it's just, it's just, we want to say it's tacky, it's so vibrational, it's just spreading and keeping people stuck in the, what do we do? We feel so helpless with such victims. Oh my gosh. Like that is the war that we're trying to combat with, seeing things from the bigger perspective. Um, and we don't need to keep, like, humanity will not need to keep experiencing these awakening, tragic, uh, horrible things to to get them awake, to see uh, the manipulation and the control systems. Uh, but uh, many people need to visually see this all play out for them to start accepting it and understanding and then go, oh, wow, shoot, okay. Suddenly now I realize I've got to keep my vibration high and not go into fear because once I go into fear, I see the world as being this really scary, dark, horrible place where I'm just, I'm just going to be gobbled up. And so that's not the life that anyone truly, 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 truly wants to experience. It's all about empowering yourselves. Light workers should be empowering themselves and others, not spreading stuff that's going to kill you. Because if you're afraid of dying, then you don't understand what spirituality really is. So master your lives and empower yourselves to enjoy and embrace all the experiences while seeing things from a really fantastic, positive perspective. Yeah, I, I think it's hard to let go of the idea of we need to save others because we're in the know, but I absolutely understand what you're saying. And I'm, I'm going to marinate on that, definitely. Yes. And that's what we say is your egos. You've all got savior complexes where you want to help others because you think you know better. Well, then that's fantastic. But the reality is, if you think you knew better, you would be able to understand and respect other people's life contracts and be able to know the nuances of the connections and the relationships and what the conflict is actually offering you it's not to keep yourselves at war it's be able to it's to be able to be able to experience uh, the different uh, perspectives and passion and, and learning and lessons and experiences it's very simple when you see it from our perspective but we know that you're attached to the emotions and the compassion of saving others and we want to say that that is not in your life contract to save others it is about your life contract is to inspire others. And so you can't do that while you're forcing someone to eat uh, your cake. <laughs> Touche, um, I think you mean. Um, my next question, um, I'll preface it by saying, I don't know if I ever truly looked at the stars ever until recently. And when I look at, when I look up at night, they're not stars. These stars are doing backflips and changing colors and obviously trying to get my attention so much to the point where I think they can hear me when I ask them to move. Um, I want to know who am I looking at when I look up in the sky? What are they doing here? And are they here to help with the shift? They are here to remind you to dance, play, and have fun, and to not take what you see so seriously. And so with that, also wanting to remind you that you are powerful and that you can command things as you choose. And so think about uh, when you want to look at uh, fear-based information and feel disempowered, uh, to be able to know that you are really good at marinating yourself in that. So it is about showing you that there is more magic that you are capable of more magic and that there is more special things that are happening, more wonderment, more exciting things to happen. So it gives you joy. It makes you feel like you have more validation to your, your inner intuition that you are very connected to. You just doubt yourself and, and dismiss it. I 1000% agree with what you're saying with it. It really has kept my hopes and uh, my whole mood up. It, it is a validation that we don't get from day to day life of, you know, what we're dealing with and who we're seeing. So it really does mean a lot to us. Well, to me, and I'm assuming us. So thank you. 
for mm -hmm. everyone who's helping us and just by being here and showing us that we're not alone because it feels like it at the moment. And the times where you have literally almost cried at the sky saying, what the hell is happening here? I'm so overwhelmed. What is the world going to do to my children? You are like crying out to, to understand this. And this is when uh, it's your own team. No, if I if the speaker was standing right beside you, she'd be like, I don't see anything. What the what are you going on about? But this was for you. This was a show for you to see this, to give you this clarification, because you have been demanding uh, mm -hmm. with much love uh, us to show ourselves to you. And uh, we did that. Um, this is how we have shown ourselves to you. So you can have undeniable proof for yourself that you saw it, you were not hallucinating, you were not under the um, influence of <laughs> narcotics. Um, this was a profound, undeniable experience for you so you can have hope. Now, if you go out tonight and demand the same stuff from us, we are going to say, you've already been awoken once, how many times do you need this? So we're going to force it back onto you. S grow your own strength. We have provided for you. We cannot keep holding your hands. And we will reward you each time you make big steps in your evolution. I would say I'm sorry, but I'm not. So thank you. <laughs> and we understand. And this is why we want you to very clearly hear this from us now. You used your free will to ask for validation. And we could provide. And we did deliver. So thank you for noticing and accepting and not brushing it off, not rubbing your eyes thinking, oh, I must have something in my eyes. You did pay attention. And we're constantly sending you signs and signs and signs and signs. And you're not noticing the significance and the purpose and the, and the true opportunities for these experiences. And you're just like everybody else who is still marinating in the 3D. Not because you want to be stuck in that, but this is life. That is the, the experiences of life. You are mastering it so much more. We want you to think about yourself a year ago, two years ago, five years ago, and 10 years ago. And we want you to hug yourself and say, oh my gosh, I am a perfectionist because I've mastered it so well. So stop nitpicking small things that you feel like you it's like you don't want to justify starting to do that pure self-love of yourself and others because you're you're too busy to try and find out what's going on in the world and why it's all wrong and forget about it you know it now focus on you you are the most important being that there is on this planet for you so honor yourself because then once you do you empower so many more. It's like this beautiful ripple effect that just flows out. Yep, I hear what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. Um, I have been noticing a sharp, sharp uptick in synchronicities. Uh, the clock, birds um, specifically. And oh, I want to know why has there been an uptick recently or is it just me paying attention more? And then following up with what you just said, what are other things that we can look out for in synchronicities that we are not seeing right now? So yes, you are right. You, your vibration has expanded quite quickly. Um, you have been getting a lot of healing, a lot of upgrades, and you're, so you're noticing that you've also been asking, you've used your free will to ask for these signs and proof, and this is how we communicate with you. And so you are noticing it now. Now you're going to notice when you start thinking about, and it already has happened, you're wanting to connect with higher uh, perspective people to be able to give you that clarifications. You're doing something that's so tremendously huge. You're asking and seeking for help. And so you're looking for it now. Most perfectionists think that they can do it all themselves and they will do it by themselves very stubbornly. You actually had to open yourself up to ask for help. And so you have been doing that and accepting that. And so you are um, noticing that as soon as you're asking for something, you're getting it very quickly. And so you're manifesting. Your manifestation uh, rewards are happening very, very fast. But don't get fooled if you want to try and manifest a million dollars. That's not for your best, highest good. You will not receive that money. Um, 
I want to talk about downloads. Um, I'm very aware that I've been receiving downloads while I'm sleeping. I will be half awake, half asleep, and I'll see what looks like writing, but it is very clearly not English. I don't even know. What, it's like block letters, but Middle Eastern looking, and it is gold. Like the color is always gold. What is that? It is light activation. It's light language, and it is uh, activating you. It is uh, sacred geometry. It's components of it. So it is upgrading you. Um, you're physically seeing uh, what uh, all of your hard work is creating. You're being activated. Awesome. Um, I've been working on um, visualizing. because, As you know, I, I tried a QHHT appointment about a month ago, and I couldn't quiet my conscious mind. Um, but after that, it seemed as though my third eyes wide opened and I've been seeing entities um, since then while I'm meditating. Um, is that a normal step in the progression of someone's third eye? While you were blocking, um, trusting what you got in that session, we actually did get to upgrade you. <laughs> and you had actually been naturally upgraded. The more you've been listening to us, uh, the more we have been keeping you in a higher frequency vibration. So you're actually uh, raising your vibrations up. Uh, the, it's partly um, these sessions, partly the vibration of this planet, partly your other inner work that you're doing. You're actually implementing the sessions and information. So you're actually jumping ahead, which is nice. But what you're sensing and seeing is visually, again, because you're using your free will, demanding from us um, to present ourselves to you, uh, you have seen it is effectively your subconscious. Uh, that uh, one of those beings is your um, subconscious. Fear, was that in Arcturian? Mm -hmm. And we're saying that uh, you saw the reptilian um, not to ski, but to make you realize that, you know, they're valid beings as well. They are real, but they're not to eat you, um, you know, while they, they, they like all various types of meat. Um, you are not having a life contract where that is going to be your fate. Good. <laughs> um, I, <laughs> I wanted to uh, kind of dovetail that. Um, while I did leave my organized religion when I woke up, I am still very Christ and God oriented. And I am constantly trying to tie what I would quote the you know, new age, whatever this is, uh, the truth, I guess, to my um, Christianity that I grew up with. What I'm noticing a lot is that people are having rapture dreams and I myself may have had one. Um, I am wondering if this is tying in directly to like the flash in quotation marks. Mm. It is about you feeling and sensing um, other timelines that uh, did occur. And so it is premonitions as such, but also to remind you to activate yourself, to be really dropping down once you start realizing that the rapture is, is correct in terms of the shift, uh, suddenly all your 3D uh, focuses get real and you start dropping the nonsense. So there is that to be motivated with. Uh, so you are still holding on to fear that maybe God is disappointed with you because you are um, doing certain things. You're afraid that some of the things you've been told, like the tarot cards, or like these sessions are tapping into the devil. We say that the devil is a man-made construct. And so the devil is in the details of teaching you um, to be controlled. Uh, you are not, and you will no longer be able to tolerate control systems. So this is why you're breaking out of that shell. So you're still trying to figure out what's the truth and what's not the truth. And so you are still concerned that you may be tricked once again, as we've already, as you've already shared with us. We fully understand and know exactly where you're at. You're still worried that um, 
that these tools for mysticism, as you may call them, um, still have corruption in them. They are tools for people to uh, use crutches for their intuition. So they may not want to fully be able to uh, trust what they are feeling from their inner self. So they will have to pull a card and be able to show with, with physical proof what that card or that tarot is um, just to feel validated with their intuition. So it is tools, it is tools, it's, it's tools of um, many, well, maybe even the, the person who is doing the tarot knows they don't need these crutches. They realize that their clients may do and they may need to see the visuals. And so the, the, the artistry in the tarot um, can speak of many things. You know that one item, one physical item could have a multitude of symbols that are connected to it. So it is supporting the person who is getting those readings, getting those messages to be able to hear it more clearly. Um, it, is, it is, from our perspective, very positive when the message is very positive. If you get doom and gloom and your life is useless and worthless and people are going to get you because you're vulnerable, those are the messages that we cannot endorse. Wow, that was literally my next question, as you probably already know. So I'm glad to hear that, because um, that, again, they're very helpful for us to hear. Um, I wanted to ask about um, the actual flash itself. Because of the new timeline, are a lot of the um, star seeds or light workers will they be staying during and after the flash to help with people who are, are not awake or who cannot physically handle the incoming energies and then assisting them to ships. We want to say that everyone will experience the flash as they depart. So it is individual. It will not be a flash for everyone to see at the same time. It will be an individual basis. It will be your personal own experience. Oh, that's interesting. Um, if our, if our, I don't know, anyone, light worker or non-light worker, if the contract is that we leave, no, wait, if we leave for new earth before the shift, because that's what our contract says, will it appear to other people that are still here as though we have died or will the body look different? Because I know the light body leaves, but the physical body stays behind. The physical body stays behind. It looks like you have uh, died. Okay. Um, the, the beings and the people who have played God on earth for eons, I want to know what their, not their fate is, but what is their next step? Because what I'm, I'm, I'm being defensive again, but what they've done to, to innocent souls I find apprehensible and unacceptable. And I don't, I don't know where else to go with that, but I'm just wondering what will happen to them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it was their contracts to be playing that role. Uh, it was not anyone's contracts to blindly follow them. And so it's again, people's choices. It is like, we want to use the analogy, well, no, the reference point of uh, who you know is Adolf Hitler. Um, it was his life contract to be that person and for others to stand up against him. Did he manipulate people to follow them or did they follow themselves using their free will? So um, who is, it's very hard. It is very hard concept for people who are emotionally charged who want to blame one person but he could not have had a following. I mean, he could not have welded the power he did if people use their free will to stop questioning the narrative and stop feeling into what integrity looks like and moral compasses feel like. And so we want to say that these people who have these roles, they're not supposed to impact negatively on humanity. They are to be there of service to show uh, and to be to be set examples of for you to realize this is not where we should be going. But peer pressure, manipulation and control always seems to win. 
it used to win because people were just following the leader and too afraid because of the consequences. What were the consequences? Death. Should any light worker be afraid of death? No, because it is not an end. It is merely a chapter. It is one page of a book of a novel of who you are. Absolutely. I understand what you're saying. Um, let's see, where should I follow with that? As far as our loved ones following the leader, um, I want to bring up the concept that you're probably very sick of talking about, which is the jab. Do the people who chose by their free will to get the jab, does that automatically mean they are not on the new earth timeline? No, not at all. It means that they are um, still using their free will to be manipulated and controlled because they're still afraid. So they are um, just still victims. So again, uh, we know that many people judge these poor victims that are being peer pressurized to do what they have been told. So do we have compassion for those? Yes, we do. Do they get punished? No, they don't. Um, when they depart, um, they will go to where they should be going. Um, we know that there are many that need help with raising their vibration and frequency, and so that's what we're doing to assist them. We are making sure that everyone that has tried and does have the contract to go to New Earth, they will. And so it's going to look different for every individual, but it's uh, partly to help awaken others and actually be able to help lift the load of those exhausted beings who have had so many lifetimes here that are stuck in mud. And so we are helping them. We are assisting them with this. Awesome. I'm glad to hear that. Um, as far as new earth, I'm assuming it's a new planet. Is it in a different galaxy or is it in this one? It's a completely different location. It is completely, completely different. We know that time and space is not really measured because everything's all together. It is all everything. It's, it's hard for you to understand, but it is, um, it is completely in a different location. But because there is no separation of time and space, it could be also considered to be right beside each other. So um, we know you want labels, so we're going to spell it out to you what you can cope with understanding. It's on the other side of the galaxy, beyond the multi-universes. So, um, you know, you're not going to be able to easily read your, read your mail. It is going to be completely separate. It's going to be completely separate and um, totally disconnected and disconnect, disconnected, disconnected. Uh, um, and people who don't understand that, we will say, well, you've had other lifetimes, you've had, uh, you've experienced source, which is a completely different location, but people say a source is still here within us. It's the same source is somewhere else, but it's also within you. Being multidimensional, you get to have to understand that um, you can be at both places at once. You can be all collected and uh, with source, broken away from source and still with source. So you're, you're everywhere and nowhere at the same time. You're in multiple, multiple different places. We want to say um, when you've had other lifetimes on different planets, um, you know, they're not next door neighbors to Earth either. So you have, you have been little show ponies zipping around all of time and space, and it doesn't matter the location of it. It really doesn't. From our perspective, it is what it is. Um, but we know little humans love to to have navigations and to um, to understand where they're going. But uh, it's no consequence of us really uh, doesn't really matter uh, from our perspective. But we do know the importance and significance of keeping you safe, helping you with the shift and keeping you protected during your experiences as as beings in your physical bodies. That's our part of our role. It's our duty. If you think you're a perfectionist, we'll triple that, quadruple that, and that's our perspective and diligence to our roles. We're not going to drop the ball on this one. 
glad to hear that also. <laughs> That's exciting. I'm excited. I'm very excited. Um, how I know there are different ways that we can get to new earth. What are those different ways? And what is the most common way that we will get to new earth? Hmm. Uh, for the majority who are still haven't quite got their frequency and vibration up, uh, we will be helping them shift uh, with assistance and those who are bigger beings who can just uh, slip in and out as soon as the shift happens when they have released themselves from their cloaks or physical, their meat suits, shall we say. When you get rid of that density, then you can do lots of things. So it depends. It depends on how much you need to process and transmute and to release and how much time, how much downtime you want before uh, having the fifth dimensional experience, remembering that not all are going to the new earth. And so it is uh, very dependent on your journey, your experience and what you want to go and do from here on out. And we want to just backtrack and we want you to feel back that joy and that excitement when we were talking about um, the shift and uh, you did get excited there and we noticed your frequency going off the charts and we say find that as much as you can during your day. That is you grounded into fifth dimension and you know you do have it because you have a smile in your heart. You have a, an excitement and an anticipation that uh, it's a forever moment of uh, Christmas day being the next day. Um, we're wanting you to be excited and, and hold that. You're really capable of holding that high frequency. And we want to say that when you are, it's almost like magic happens around you. You notice it within your kids and you notice it within the family members that are around you and your friends. This is your greatest joy and gift of humanity is having that joy and holding on to it. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, it, it's amazing while well, thinking of my children's future, especially. And I'm just really excited for this new adventure and the opportunity. Mm. They, are, um, they are here for a, of service. They are excited as well. And they are trying to uplift you um, as well. And they see and sense your density. Um, and that's why the goofballs, uh, they want to be entertaining you and making you laugh and be less focused and distracted from um, the things that look very scary. Yes, yeah, they're doing a good job. Um, will we be meeting our guides when we get there in person, physically? Um, not all of your guides are physical and so it will be senses of orbs. You will have a more direct hotline, shall we say, uh, but they are not gonna be there. Um, they're also gonna be really busy because Technically, your guides could be, uh, you could be just one of many that they service. And even though we, we know that you want to feel like a special unicorn, that you have your own private everything in the spiritual realms, the teams, the team members. So you've got special soul families that you will physically see um, and you will connect with them and it will be like a family reunion. So you will really appreciate the, you will feel complete you will actually feel really complete when you get to new earth because you will feel like, oh, this makes sense. Now I understand myself. Now I understand what I was missing and hanging out for, why I was feeling kind of homesick. It's that frequency of energy. That's where you truly resonate with. You, you, are, you are more attuned and comfortable in a higher frequency um, as most are. You're just remembering it more. And it's almost like you are oh, you want to say you're almost addicted to that high frequency because you deserve it. But this density is very tiresome and you're almost bored. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and yes. Um, <laughs> when we get to New Earth, will we then have our full soul memory and the archives of all the previous lives and the lessons that we learned that we are right now on the other side of the veil from? Not as such as you would expect because you still have lessons. So uh, those people who need to master still the fifth dimension in this capacity moving on. So yeah, kind of, but also you don't get given the keys to the universe uh, of information because what's the point in then experiencing the fifth? 
Uh, so it's still another school of entertainment and factor and so much fun and true, true, true joy. Uh, and so um, it is like you've already, some of you have already experienced fifth dimensional uh, realities, but it's different because of the different experiences you had to get to get to that point. And so you may have mastered a fifth dimensional planet uh, that had different experiences. Mm, it's like going so you go to a movie theater to watch a movie um it's you can have a comedy for one and a drama for another let's just say this human experience is very drama and we want to say that um the last time people were in a third dimensional uh planet it was comedy and so now you've all graduated into your fifth dim uh, dimensional experiences going to the movie theater and the the drama of the 3d is going to be transmuted into a nicer positive deeper more expansive fifth dimensional experience and so even if you've gone to the comedy of the fifth dimensional from the other 3d planet it's not the same. So ugh, what are we trying to say? Sorry, we're not even, we're mansplaining this and we're not happy. We could have done it better. So the, um, you will not know all of the, uh, the experiences, especially the higher dimensional lifetimes, because you're still trying to focus on mastering the third, sorry, the fifth dimension of Gaia as a soul's evolution for humanity with these, with these soul families from this experience knowing that you're not going to be meeting your entire soul families, just the ones that are here on this planet. Now, those veils are going to be removed and then you're going to move into the fifth dimension and meet all of your soul families who've also had this incredible, we want to say crazy, but that does not, we don't view it as crazy. We see it as fantastic opportunities for growth and lessons and experiences in a very challenging um, third dimensional planet. So, um, we're not answering your question as well as we could have with that. Sorry, mm -hmm. just the the question was so vast we could have answered it in multiple ways. So, yeah, uh, no, it works. Um, I try and visualize five D New Earth. I think I heard that on one of these episodes, um, one of these recordings. Trying to visualize what my day to day life looks like. Um, the problem I have is what am I going to be doing if I'm not working for a paycheck? And I, I realize that's kind of pathetic, but really though, what are we going to be doing? Yeah, so your routines are going to be quite different. You're going to be connecting them profoundly to each other and really mastering those emotions, mastering even the lower emotions, if you want to, in the third, um, just be able to master fully more emotions. Um, it may sound really boring, but it actually is really powerful because when you can harness pure higher uh, density vibrations of emotions, then you can manipulate more energy and manifest things. So you're learning how to control energy and create. You're creating so many different things. So it's about, um, there's so much to do there. So you're in, it's like different, you learn different skill sets. You, you're learning, you're passionate about expanding your your physical understanding of uh, energy and your uh, many people already know some of the stuff. So they're actually going to be helping and teaching others. Others are going to be students and it's um, you could uh, have some downtime uh, to connect profoundly to others, to reconnect with soul families. You're going to be busy. You're not going to be, um, <laughs> you're not going to be bored. And we want to say your dance card uh, is going to be very full because you're going to catch up with so many people. It's, it's very, 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 very social, but not in the, oh my gosh, I hate people social because uh, in the density that you're in right now, people do feel obnoxious, but you're wanting to find um, that there are high vibrational people, which everyone really is on the new earth. And so it's, you want to hang out with each other, which is often quite strange for many people uh, to think that they would be wanting to be social butterflies. Um, but it's so ex extraordinary to share and co-create, co co-exist. It is fantastic. It's a co-op. It is, it is everything that you've ever wanted. It's like the best kind of vacation of summer, summer camp that you can fathom. So we're not wanting you to, to worry about um, any of the, the physical 
demands and requirements of surviving. Um, through the third dimensional planet here is really focused on just surviving. So when you take away the worry of having to just survive, when you take away the worry of um, dum 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 death, and when you actually get the whole reason of why you want to have these physical lifetimes, you're going to just be in bliss. I can picture myself drinking Mai Tais on the porch with a nice breeze. It'll be awesome. I'm really excited. Yeah. Um, I guess I left my most important question for last, which is, is Michael Jackson going to be joining us on New Earth? <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Um, yes, well, he comes in and he says, well, I am no longer Michael Jackson when you really shift to the new earth, just like you will not be yourself when you shift to the new earth. It is about soul frequency energies. And so he's going to be reforming with all his other soul essences, really. And he's going to be, he's going to be there, but he's not going to be as you see him as, or assume him to be. He's going to be in this more natural um, light body state. So yes, he will be there and you can connect in with him if you want. You'll know the truth of his life when you do, um, just like with me. Uh, it's, it's quite helpful for you to truly find the truth. This is where uh, you can relax knowing you're not going to find all the truth here in 3D. You can find it instantly in the fifth. So trust, you will get the information that you need. But when you actually on the new earth, you're like, ugh, this seems like too much fun work to worry about that stuff. It's just, you know, you can see it from that bigger perspective. So you're not even really going to be that desperate to look into the, the dramas of uh, how everything went so out of control here because it's just going to be so insignificant. Yeah. Um... Uh, side note, my daughter, who was born in 2018, just heard a few of his songs today in his music videos, and she loved it, which means he's timeless, and made me think, oh, maybe she'll hear him later. Um, I'm excited for possibility, at least. You brought up a, a good point with uh, fractals, um, I think is what you were referring to with him. Um, will fractals be joining or combining with their other soul fragments? on new earth or is that a down the line situation no it is um there are many that are kind of emerging and so you really are all one so you're just going to be embodying that you'll remember all your fractals uh that are in this uh this planet at this time awesome all right well joe i think that's all i have um i have a few like really quick selfish questions but as far as the overall questions that was all of them Okay.